So first I would like to thank for the invitation and let me say some words of explanation of my presence here. So I'm a physicist, not a philosopher. So, but I couldn't resist the temptation of uh, raised by, by Dr. Skovron uh, who requested or asked me whether it is possible for me to say something about how, how uh, topology appears and what, what is role, a role played by, by topology in physics and in very simple physics. I would say that it will be very simple topology and in very simple physics. And uh, obviously it is interesting because there are a lot of this idea, topological ideas around now. But I wanted to see how it uh, came to the situation. So what was really the history of, uh, of, of, of application of topological ideas in physics. So I'd say that my lecture will be more pedagogical. I wouldn't call it tutorial because there will be uh, this formalism where we will be treated very superficially, I would say, due to the limitations of time. But nevertheless, uh, I would like to concentrate on a very, as I told you, a very simple topological concept applied to very simple physical systems. So let me start from, uh -huh, okay, from such a historical remark. And uh, Gauss Nachlass, so there is a note dated 1833, in which first he complains that from something which then was called geometria situs or analysis situs, which then evolved into something which we call topology now, we, uh, they didn't obtain too much or hadn't obtained too much until that time. And uh, as a kind of uh, uh, despite the fact that from the time when he dated first, uh, I would say, occurrence of these ideas, topological ideas, so I think he says about 150 years, maybe it's a little bit of exaggeration, but he uh, meant, uh, I think, Leibniz already at that time, but mainly Euler and, and the followers, and then the, so, so he complains that there is nothing special uh, which this uh, line of thoughts brought to, the, to, to mathematics. And then an example of application of this, what he called uh, uh, geometria situs, uh, on the border of, uh, of uh, geometria magnitudinis, which is more or less something which we call analytic geometry now. He proposed to calculate something like that. Uh, so, or, or, or he writes simply that this integral which you see here, which looks quite complicated, but it is, in fact, it is not, is, uh, this is an integral, double integral. So you, you integrate this function over one curve and the second curve, which somehow how intertwines this first one. And that the, the result is a, natural number which counts the number of windings of this curve C prime around C. Now we call it linking number and this is a linking number formula of Gauss. And uh, uh, at that, despite the fact that this was, uh, this was, uh, what should I do here I think? Uh, uh, and he, he remarks that this does not depend on mutual po position of curves, spatial orientation, on the, the number of these windings. Okay? Uh, and despite the fact that it was uh, then when it was printed, it was collected in such a, uh, under the common name, so this notes from this time about that Zur Electrodynamic, uh, Zur Electrodynamic, but, uh, but in fact it has it had nothing to do with, uh, with physics in this, in this uh, formulation of Gauss. But let us jump 50 years later and let's assume 
that we have a physical situation which corresponds to this picture. So let's uh, assume that this uh, green curve is actually a wire with a current I. Sorry. With a current I. Okay. And then we can calculate, uh, so such a wire produces a magnetic field, and this magnetic field, we can integrate the line integral of this, uh, of this uh, magnetic field along the second line, okay? And the resulting uh, magnetic field B gives rise to such an such a integral. And in fact, this, this what stands here is exactly this Gauss integral only, only written in this vectorial notation. So, so this R and R prime are corresponding vectors of the co of with coordinates x, y, z, and x, y, z prime. So, and it was Maxwell himself who observed that in fact this is exactly the same integral which uh, was calculated by Gauss. And uh, he also refers to these notes I quoted on the previous transparency that uh, this is a kind of uh, topological in our nowadays language and that time it was still geometria situs uh, result which is relevant for physics. <coughs> Why it is uh, of topological ca character it's not clear maybe here, but I would say some hints could be uh, discovered when we realize once more that the uh, actual result, which means that, that this integral is uh, uh, equal to the multiple of the current in this, in this, in this, in this green wire, does not depend completely on, 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 on details of the arrangement, okay? So actually it does not depend on the position of this curve and so on, but once again only on the, this uh, winding, number of windings or linking number between the curves. By the way, so uh, you can go at that time in other direction and it's completely clear for everybody who has some, had something to do with electromagnetic theory, that this, uh, that this line integral is somehow connected to the flux of the, of the um, current through the surface uh, bounded by this red curve. And obviously if I put this wire twice or thrice and, and so on, so the, the, the current will be uh, proportional to the number of this uh, of this uh, numbers of the of the green wire goes through the surface, so it really means that you can prove actually this linking number using electromagnetic theory. Okay, this is maybe a, some kind of exaggeration, but there's a nice argument how it works. Okay, so let us jump several tens of years ahead and then uh, I want to explain some I would say a paradigmatic arrangement which is also somehow involved with topological uh, ideas in, in physics so-called uh, Aharonov bomb effect. So let's imagine a quantum particle or quantum particles at that moment who travel in such a situation that uh, they are produced at some source, okay, here, and they have some several paths to, to choose how to go to the screen when they are detected. But on the way, past this diagram, there is a solenoid or simply a magnet, okay, magnet with a, uh, which produces magnetic field B. This is the, the field is parallel to the, so perpendicular to the, to the surface on which I did, depicted everything and uh, concentrated inside this uh, magnet as it is usual with ideal solenoids or ideal magnets and uh, 
Okay, and then think about the different possibilities the, the quantum, a quantum particle has when it travels, okay? So wave function of such a particle is a complex function. It consists of, so you can write it as a, as a, <coughs> a real uh, amplitude, A, and a phase, okay? Also real. <coughs> and this, um, obviously, both depend on the position of the particle and the space. And uh, when, so when such a particle travels along some path, you can calculate the change of this, uh, so, so by solving, uh, solving Schrodinger equation, the presence, uh, presence of, of magnetic field, everything is expressed by vector potential, which is connected with the, uh, with the magnetic field by simple equation, the simply rotation of this, of this, or curl of this A is equal to B. But uh, it happens that this uh, phase difference is expressed by, by, by such an integral taken along the path. <laughs> okay, so if you consider two, two paths, uh, different paths, okay, uh, then you can calculate the uh, net difference between this, this phase acquired um, by traveling along one and along the other one. Okay, and it happens that this, uh, using this, this formula, you can express this like here, okay, or here, and uh, uh, it could be using some simple uh, integral calculus, you, it can be expressed via magnetic field. So what is interesting in this arrangement that in this configuration, the particle actually never goes through the region where the magnetic field is present. Okay? So in a sense it feels only the fact that uh, potential, that, 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 poten that this um, um, vector potential is not, not zero, despite the fact that B itself is zero. So this, uh, I would say, uh, raised such a problem whether it is uh, what is real, okay, whether uh, magnetic field is real or rather that potential is real. So that potential is a real uh, being, I would say, it's very hard to accept because it's non-unique. So this is a kind of, I would say, not very deep, but some kind of, I would say, ontological problems connected with the fact. But for me, what is important is that that again, so and it's everything depends on, on the fact that there is some forbidden region here, I would say. Uh, and depending whether these two passes differ by the fact that one goes on the one side, on the other side of this forbidden region, the, the, the effect could be observed. Okay, and so what does it really mean from the practical point of view? So you have a source of, say, electrons who travel through this diaphragm and then when you put uh, here this magnet, so the inter I interference fringes on the, on the screen should change uh, depending whether we have this magnet or not. And this is really the result of an experiment. Uh, this, is, uh, this is interesting that this is why I said that this is paradigmatic because this is uh, when you understand the, the idea of what, what happens in this, in this uh, configuration of uh, electric fields, magnetic fields and moving, moving quantum particles, so many things can be explained. For example, uh, the, Maxwell, uh, the Dirac's idea about uh, magnetic monopole. So what is the idea of magnetic monopole? If you look at the uh, Maxwell equations, in a vacuum, they are, they are symmetric with respect to such a change of, of uh, exchange of electric and magnetic fields. If you uh, introduce magnetic uh, electric uh, charges and currents, as we usually, as we have in our world, so they lose this nice property of being symmetric. But from mathematical point of view or conceptual even point of view, nothing prevents uh, us by restoring this uh, the symmetry by 
assuming that there are really magnetic charges and magnetic currents. Now this is this uh, this is <coughs> this uh, symmetry is restored under obviously also exchanging electric and magnetic currents. Okay, so what are the consequences of such a of such a assumption? So let's consider a completely static situation when there are no uh, time, there is no time dependence of fields or, or charges or currents. So you can, you can think about such a monopole as a one end of the very, very long and thin magnet, which uh, uh, extends to the infinity in one direction. It means that uh, this other pole, say northern pole, is very, very far, so it does not influence the situation which is here in the region when we investigate the, 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 our system, okay? And uh, the, this should be equivalent to, to, the, to, the, to the situation when we have a, a monopole, a magnetic monopole, rather than dipole like in magnet, okay? So you can use uh, familiar laws of electrostatics translated into magnetostatic okay so you can you can calculate the the magnetic charge inside of some uh, some closed surface you can choose the surface uh, in this way that the only significant part comes from this uh, i would say from this configuration which i was depicted on the previous slide when you have the uh, plane perpendicular to the solenoid and then you consider different paths on this on this uh, on this uh, surface and then this uh, this net change of phase in a Haronov bomb bomb uh, phase as you as you remember was proportional to this flux of this magnetic field through the surface um, at that time between the paths so it means that, but in fact, so it means that you can, you can, using a Haronov bomb experiment, you can detect existence of this solenoid. But in fact, there should be no solenoid extending to infinity. There should be some, some single monopole, if the monopole existed. But, uh, uh, so, to, have the situation when this is not possible to discover existence of this of this solenoid, you have to assume that this net change of phase in the Aharonov bomb uh, arrangement is proportional to two pi because then there will be no uh, there will be not no change in, in, in interference fringes in experiment. So what does it mean? So if you equate uh, this. Uh, a Haronov bomb change of phase with the fact that it should be uh, equal to 2 and pi so you obtain such a nice uh, relation between magnetic elementary magnetic charge and electric charge and magnetic charge so you see that it is in a sense quantized because the product of them must be equal to uh, n time, times some fundamental constant in this case this is Planck constant over two in the uh, using the units I, I chose here so uh, the this is interesting from the point of view of quantization because usually uh, the effect on quantization in quantum mechanics you get from some boundary conditions okay so so you you impose in condition that functions are integrable for example and then you obtain quantization and you know that the, in fact that the E is the electric charge is quantized in nature so if there existed a one magnetic monopole it we automatically have this um, quantization of electric charge so experimentally we didn't discover this but this is interesting that non-existing entity somehow implies that that E should be quantized so but we cannot accept this explanation of quantization because we do not have, uh, we do not observe the, the magnetic uh, monopoles. 
So, uh, what is the why I say that all the situation are somehow paradigmatic for this simple application of topological ideas in, in physics? Uh, because, uh, as you know, so when you say to somebody what is topology about, you say that this is about continuous transformations. Okay. So, for example, if you have a region with a hole, you can transform it to arbitrary other region with a hole. But such things like gluing the hole or producing additional holes are not allowed. Okay. So this is uh, this is a very, I would say, basic and 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 simplest probably idea of topology based on the concept of continuity and continuous transformations. Okay. So and in all these cases, if you if you think about that, the situation somehow uh, invoked this, this setting. Okay? So you have some forbidden region through uh, going through which somehow was some kind of, ex uh, of uh, discontinuity. Okay? It could be this part of space which was occupied by the solenoid in, in the Aharonov bomb experiment or obviously you cannot unwind two solid curves, okay, without such a discontinuous changes, for example, to go uh, of one of these wires through the other one, okay? So what is important from this point of view is to help to characterize such a, such a thing like a region with a hole, okay? So everybody sees whether there is a hole or not, but let's say that the hole is very small, we cannot see it by an eight eyes and um, or maybe it's a uh, multi-dimensional situation where it's even more complicated. So the first, uh, I would say the simplest idea of characterizing such a, such a, um, <coughs> a region with a hole is, a, I would say that there are homotopic methods, okay? So this was already mentioned by Professor Biga in his in his lecture, so you can continuously transform one curve into other uh, in some situations. And for example, this is the situation for this uh, green curves. And it is not possible uh, if uh, to, to transform in a continuous way this um, one of these greens to the red. Okay, so one can treat two such passes which which have common origin and common end as a mapping from, from a circle to our space and uh, consider equivalence, equivalence classes with respect to the continuous transformations of this, of this kind. Okay, so this, this uh, classes form a group in a natural way under the composition of, of, uh, of, of transformations of the maps, and this is called homotopy group. And if it is trivial, it means there is no hole. If it's not trivial, there are holes. Obviously, you can imagine more complicated situations, so exactly you can, you can for example, uh, wind this curve twice or thrice around this hole, and there will be different equivalence class uh, you can also have the situation when you have more holes, the situation is more complicated, then this homotopy group will be completely different. Okay? There is a natural, uh, natural extension to higher dimensions when, uh, when you, instead of, uh, of treating the maps from S1, uh, you, you consider maps from, from spheres of higher dimensionality. Okay, so this is one, one thing how to, one way how to characterize such a empty regions in so holes in a, in a region. There is another one which is maybe conceptually a little bit more complicated, but in practical calculations sometimes easier to perform, which are say homological methods. So how to the problem is now how to distinguish such an empty triangle, a hole, from a solid triangle. So, and this 
region inside triangles also part of our set. Okay. So you introduce the com complex of k simplex. So it means there is the set of uh, points in our space. One more in the number, which is uh, by one larger than the dimension of of our space, and we call it simplex. And the face is a is a com uh, collection of the points when one of this of these points is removed. Okay, so. So, uh, so in our case, our simplex is this, uh, these are the three vertices, and and faces are are pairs. Okay, so which obviously determines somehow this what we usually call face or side of of a triangle. Well, the concept of simplicial uh, complex uh, is uh, a natural one because it is simply a collection of such simplices, uh, but not arbitrary, they have to fulfill some two elementary elementary uh, conditions, namely that uh, that uh, the simplex, the, if some simplex is a member of our simplicial complex, all its faces are also, and then then they cannot intersect in the wild way, for example. Uh, okay. For example, that some um, edge of, of some some points v some from some vertex is somehow uh, not coincide with the vertex on other simplex. Okay, okay. We can introduce also some orientation arbi in arbitrary way. So just decreating uh, decreting that 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 some order of this of these vertices uh, gives uh, orientation plus one, and uh, if we permute them so the order changes as the uh, parity of the uh, permutation changes okay uh, and then we can construct an abstract vector space out of this uh, simplices because we can we can quite formally make such a formal sums okay in this case with with uh, coefficients with the natural coefficients or integer coefficients Okay, and then we define homology groups. So first we uh, uh, first we define the boundary mapping, so which somehow sends uh, um, elements of the simpli uh, simplicial complex, or rather these chains, or this combination into combination of faces of them. Okay, this is a formal definition. You see that it ex that it takes uh, one of the vertices, so it really sends a, a um, say simplex into one of its faces or combination of its faces, and uh, we define two subsets of this uh, formal vector space. So first, uh, the elements uh, for which. Uh, the boundary vanishes, and the second is that this, which are boundaries of some regions, okay, or some other same simplices. Uh, because this uh, um, boundary operator, operator is cleverly constructed, so it means that uh, uh, when you apply it twice, it, you obtain identically zero, so there is this uh, inclusion between these two sets, and you can you can treat the quotient of them, and this is exactly the homology group. And for example, and by b, beta of k, I denote the dimension of this dimension in the sense of of this uh, vector space. Okay, and uh, these are called Betty numbers. These are, as you can imagine, invariants of uh, continuous transformations between simplices or simplicial complexes. And now you can distinguish, using this concept, you can distinguish these two uh, figures. Okay, so, sorry. Back. Uh, for a triangle, this empty triangle, this uh, dimensions are 1, 1, and 2 for first three homology groups. 
and for the solid triangle these are 1 and 0, 0. Okay, so what is the advantage of this? Ah, you can apply it to the, to the several things, for example, to identical particles about which we heard in the previous, during the previous lecture. So, as previously, by coincidence, I did out a configuration space of single particle by X, just like Professor Pigai did. And then the construction he alluded to, so this Linus and Merheim construction, is to construct the configuration space of N particles, which is the Cartesian products of X minus this diagonal, so minus this, this what he called uh, singular set. Okay? Okay. So now you can you can think of exchanging particles as uh, moving them from one position to other and at the same time moving the second one to the, to the, to the original one, the first one. Okay? So this is exchange of the particles. The net result should be that we obtain the same because these are, this, these particles are indistinguishable. So you see that you have really the pass the closed paths in this, in this configuration space and the topological properties of the space determine what we can do, what, what really is the net result of this exchange. Okay? So you see that all this concept of homotopy here plays a role here. And indeed, it can be proved that the quantum statistics, so it means whether what what does it mean, quantum statistics? So we, we are interested in the way the phase of the wave function changes after exchanging of the particles, of two particles or more particles, okay? So if it does not change, these are bosons, okay? If it changes by pi, these are fermions. Okay, and what is the result of this? So this, and this is somehow, I didn't prove it, but somehow I, I, I give you hints how to understand this. It's really encoded in this uh, first homotopy, or is given by this first homotopy group. And in fact, it's also encoded in the first homology group, which in this case is some kind of abelian representation of the first homotopy group. So if you start with uh, d particles, uh, the, 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 the n particles in, in d dimensions, r is, my x is now r to the power of d, so this is d dimensional real space. Okay? So if d is uh, larger or equal to 3, so you can calculate this, uh, this homotomy group. You can calculate very easily also this homology group. And this homology group appears to be Z2. It means that this is the, you know, the, the natural numbers, mod, or, uh, integer numbers modulo 2. So plus or minus 1, you can say. Okay? So this is exactly the situation when you can have only bosons and fermions. What is interesting is that for D equal 2, so in two-dimensional space, you have... Uh, this, uh, this first homology group is simply the uh, uh, additive group of <coughs> integer numbers, which uh, is interpreted that the, the change of phase is arbitrary, and these are onions, so-called onions. So this, okay, this explains I, at the very end. So this explains why two-dimensional situation is so interesting. So you have not only bosons and fermions, but also onions, which can be detected experimentally because you can really arrange, in a sense, the situation when this, all this movement is on, in, in, in solids, okay, in crystals, when this movement is restricted to two-dimensional space. Okay, so this is, uh, you see that we started from a very simple situation of characterizing the holes in the, in the regions of space and the role these uh, this holes play on various uh, physical phenomena and then we can, using this concept, 
building on upon this theory of homologies uh, uh, upon this we can we can characterize such a abstract situation of identical situation but it's interesting that the one particular cell configuration we are accustomed to the fact that configuration spaces are some uh, uh, Cartesian pro products of lines, okay, so it means that there are some uh, real spaces of, of some dimension, dimension, okay, but it could be, it could be, I don't know what is this here, so the, the word here was produced by the spell checker, so it should be more possibilities than the one, so, but this is, uh, we are not restricted to the situation when this uh, con initial configuration spaces are actually um, um, ours. For example, a student of mine is his PhD um, uh, considered the situation when this configuration space from the very beginning had some interesting uh, topological structure. For example, this were graphs. Okay, so there are some other applications I wanted to say, but then I uh, decided to say something about these identical particles knowing that Professor Bigai will be talking before me. But uh, these ideas of uh, homotopy group and homology groups can be uh, used to explain many phenomena. Okay, so magnetic fields in solids, so called Hall effect, artificial solids in both the Einstein condensates, but you model actually crystals uh, by uh, very cold atoms put into traps. Okay, so and forming so-called Bose-Einstein condensate. What is very interesting is uh, some kind of topology, something which is called topological error-free quantum computing. The idea is again that, that obviously the, what, what is the uh, main restriction in constructing quantum computer is some kind of uh, many types of unavoidable errors which are which occur during this calculation. But you can try to arrange such situation that that these errors somehow uh, are in other in, in other uh, homology or homotopy class, and then it is uh, they are easy detectable in a sense. Okay, so this this should be another. <laughs> also, a huge data analysis. You can you can have a, a big uh, sets of data, which you can treat as kind of points in a many dimensional space and then you can define also simplices and simplicial complexes in this space okay this is a, a huge uh, amount of arbitrariness in doing that but this can be somehow uh, narrowed by 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 trials and errors and then uh, analyzing this uh, this topological structure from the point of view of homologies this is very profitable. For example, you can uh, you can uh, analyze uh, the mm, digital images in this case uh, in such a way. Okay. So thank you very much.